Okay, let's talk about project one. We're supposed to be creating a digital flyer for an event of some sort. <clears throat> so we need to have, number one, gather some information. What are the, what's the event? What are the details of the event? What's the important information that we need to relay about this event? We also need to go ahead and think about how we want to feel about this event. If you think, remember we talked about the emotional impact of color. We also talked about um, picking the right fonts, typefaces, and the emotional response of different typefaces. And so my recommendation is after you've decided on the event and gathered the information, make a list five six ten adjectives that describe the emotional impact of the event um, some people will choose to even create what's called a mood board which is just grabbing some different images to help them get in the mood and kind of pasting them all together just so they can refer back and get general inspiration uh, to keep them focused on the general mood um, and so we want to think through those as well. Once we've done that, we're going to jump into Photoshop and do a file new. Our project specs call for 1920, 1080. Um, at 72 pixels per inch. Since this is going to be a full on-screen flyer, we're going to put it, make sure that it is in landscape mode, not portrait mode. Uh, I do not use the artboards here and we we'll probably won't even talk about artboards this particular class and so I'm gonna let the rest of this uh, kind of go uh, so that it's defaults and here is our default 1920 by 1080 these are some guides because this is a uh, HD resolution it thinks that I might be trying to create video and so it's showing me the quote-unquote title safe areas for this um, if I was doing a so, uh, graphic to go with video. And so that's what that is. We can, I'm going to go ahead and view if your guides are showing and in the way. Just go show and turn off guides. That's fine. Um, so first step as I'm thinking through this, uh, and you can do it a lots of different ways, but I want to kind of reinforce some of what we've talked about when it came to the elements of design as well. By the way, this is called format, right? 1920 by 1080 on a uh, monitor. And it's going to be saved in a PNG format, uh, which means we can use full, all of our millions of colors, 8-bit color per channel. Um, so we're not limited on colors because it's going to export as a PNG format. Uh, we're not really going to take advantage of any transparencies with this uh, when it comes to the final piece. And so a solid background works just fine for what we're doing. Where I would start is using what are called adjustment layers. You may have seen me touch these before. Adjustment layers affect everything below them. And so the first adjustment layers if we click that let's pull that up so you can see that drop these all are more solid in nature and these are the three that I'm going to play with here first I'm going to create a solid color and what color is it are we going to be happy that might be too bright for our purposes or it might be too saturated for our purposes, something that's got a happy feel to it, a little warmer feel. This is going to be more of a professional type of thing. So, choose what you can, you're going to want to use for your background. And I'm going to go with a slightly warmer, maybe move it a little more towards happy, warm, happy. Feel somewhere in there 
as a base color on this one. We can all, because it's an adjustment layer, we can always go back and change our mind. And that's the beauty of adjustment layers. Yes, they affect everything underneath it, uh, but they allow us to constantly go back and readjust what we're doing. <clears throat> Next thing that I would possibly do is think about adding some sort of texture to it. Now, the pattern fill is a good way to do this. It's not the only way. There's lots of ways to do this. So I could come in and one of the photos, uh, the latest version of Photoshop has a lot of these grouped together and preset in different ways. I have not completely gotten used to how they have them organized and I miss some of the ones that I have certainly used in the past. But we're going to grab this one. Uh, this is one that I download it off the internet. <clears throat> you can do that. You can import patterns if you've gone and download them off the internet. And sometimes you can find them and sometimes you can't. <laughs> but they are usually PNGs and they are test light meaning the they're little rectangle images, and the edges match up exactly. So I'm going to add this one and come over here, and I can scale it. How much texture do I really want on this piece? Or how important is that texture? Just overwrote all my lovely orange. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I can look at a few different options. It's more of a multiply mode. That's letting the color burns bring in some of that orange through. I can, if I lighten it, I get some texture. Or luminosity. Lum luminosity is going to use the grayscale from this particular image with the color from underneath. Um, still think that's going to be kind of big, so I'm going to shrink that down a little bit more. And I can't do it with that little of my mouse, so I can just use my arrows up and downs till I get kind of a feel that I want. Now, because of the amount of value that change between the lights and dark parts of this image, it's going to make it a little bit of a challenge to get text to work on it. So I'm going to back this down. Uh, let's start off at about 10%. That adds just a little bit. And again, I can use my arrows up and down to kind of dial in what I want. So I've got a little bit of texture going on this piece now. And the next of our adjustment layers, I'm going to use a gradient. Now the default gradient is black to transparent. It's linear, so let's kind of glance real quickly at what radial looks like or angled. I don't use that one often. Reflected, I'll often use this one and then especially if light's going to be shining across something. And we can scale this as well. How strong or soft do we want that gradient? We can also go in and create our own gradients. We do that simply by opening up an existing gradient. Click on the little color stop down there. I want to take this maybe from gray or even give it some saturation. So if I wanted a little yellowish streak going through there, I can certainly do that. And I can take it to something other than black. In fact, I can use my color picker if I just come out here and grab that same yellow. Then maybe come down and change the brightness of it. So it's going from a brighter yellow to a darker yellow. 
we, if we want in between stops, we can do that. I can make it go through blue. <laughs> and all sorts of terrible things. Uh, cancel. Command Z or Control Z to undo. Okay. I'm going to just grab these and pull them right off to get rid of them. Up here is the transparency. So I could make, right now it's 100% uh, going to 0%. And so I can change that to, say, 50%. And you'll notice that those transparent regions are out. Again, that's probably too strong. Um, so I'm going to change my modes. Let's go to maybe a soft light. Multiply, you can see what you're getting. Put these all darken. These all lighten. These lighten lights and darken darks. These give you some interesting effects. And again, we could do it just based on the saturation or color, or even the luminosity. Uh, I tend to use soft lights a lot. And then we can play with that in order to get what we were looking for. I'm going to go back in because uh, probably my favorite thing to do is grab a radial blur gives me a little spotlight. I don't know. I'm just looking for a subtle movement one way or the other. And later I can rearrange where they're going and what they're doing. But as opposed to being just a plain white piece of paper, it now has some texture to it. It's got some, a little bit of a value change from light to dark. And it's got a color that's kind of warm and happy. Even going to go in and grab that yellow and go with a more saturated, darker version of it. Keep it in the same ballpark. And glass is fun. Let's find something that might be a little more fun. You will spend more time on this. This is simply for demonstration purposes. Chalk <laughs> duster. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to have a version. And so I can eat it. We're thinking about crap here. By the way, if you saw me stretch it out, what I did was Command T or Edit Free Transform and grab it by its sides. What we don't want to do is hold the Shift key and stretch it or do terrible, nasty things to it. Command Z to put it back where it was. So, class. We're returning to class on, let's look at our calendar real quickly. Should have done my research first. We are off on Labor Day, so September 8th, Wednesday, September 8th. So, okay. Did you notice when I clicked that it tried to jump in to where we had the previous version, Command Z, so sometimes I need to come click underneath just to make sure I'm cleared. September 8th. There we go. 
Now that obviously is going to be way too big, so I'm going to just, I can either go in there and change this and just type in a number and see where I go. I can do some math, make it two thirds, uh, so about 120 pixels. I'm going to instead, so I want to kind of square this up in my mind. I'm going to Command T and I'm going to bring this over to where it's lines up there. Make sure it kind of lines up with the edge of the seat there. And then pull it straight down. Hold the shift so it doesn't move left and right. Okay. Six PM nine PM. If I'm going left aligned, I might want to maybe line it up here so it fits in there. I could make it the same size as what I had. I might find out that I want to do it this way. Um, I am actually trying to repeat the size as I go through. Even if I right align it, I might find some places over here where my alignment becomes important. So actually, let's do it this way. I think I, what I want to do is I'm looking at it visually. It's kind of tucky in there. Somewhere in there. I was using my arrows up and down to kind of nudge it around a little bit. It feels off. Maybe fit in there a little bit. And let that Y bring us in there. Class Wednesday. Click my tool, move it up a little bit. I can grab all three of those layers with my move tool selected to make sure that they line up a little better. Uh, I was doing it visually. It's a looking. But Photoshop get us more correct. Even visually it still looks like when I align it left there it needs to you know, grab, shift click those two layers and just kind of nudge them. They felt a little far off to the left. This seems to be a little bit wide, so I'm going to click in there and hold my Option key, bring it back in a little bit. Same thing between September and 8. Seems a little. And now grab my Move tool, hit Command T, and resize that just a little. You'll notice there's little red lines that pop up while I'm doing this sometimes. It's not going to do it now that I told you to pay attention to it. Uh, and those are alignment lines. So. Same thing here. I think I'm going to tweak it up before I finalize that. I'm going to go adjust my kerning between 6 and p.m. Click in. And if I wanted, I could maybe ex in the space and here just a little bit with my kerning, get a little more separation between the six to the nine. Command T and then bring it over to line it up in there. And bring it so the top of this Y kind of lines up with those. Okay, as I'm looking at it, uh, let's do a little tagline.
bring the fun. Again, command T, keep it off the edge a little bit there. Because I've been doing this, I think I'm going to start off seeing what it looks like if I command minus to zoom out here for a minute. Grab it. Or shift as I bring it down. Grab all those layers and move them up just a touch. While I'm there, I might decide, hmm, let's add a little depth of interest. So I'm going to add a little drop shadow and see what we end up with. I'm going to go grab, use this color for my drop shadow. Actually, I'm going to darken that up a little bit, change the brightness of it, keep the hue the same. This is all one hue, if you notice, so it's a monochromatic in nature. Off. I want the white to be coming more in that direction. Soften it up just a touch. Maybe even add, yeah, my oven boss is awful harsh there. Um, soften it just a touch. Maybe. Now it's really the dark edge that, that's making it look harsh, so I'm going to come down here and change the opacity on that. So I like the light edge, I just, the dark edge was adding too much of a for me, so I'm going to adjust that a little bit. I could if I want, because we have light coming from, I've already defined the global light when we created our first drop, when we created our drop shadow, so um, it's been from about 147 degrees, so. Could add a gradient light to make it linear. And reverse that. So it's light on top and back that way on down. It's going to get just a little bit of it. Maybe we'll say 147 degrees. little change in value going on there. I could even add some texture to that if I wanted to. I don't know that we need to. Um, just so you can see it. Click it into maybe a luminosity mode. I'm not I'm gonna scale that way down because I don't want much text too much texture. And then back this down as well. So I'm getting just a little maybe going on on it. Since I have that in place, the shortcut to kind of use that, those settings, and then I'll be able to tweak them is I'm going to hold the Option key or Alt on the PC, grab the word Effect, and just drag it onto my other layers. Then I can come kind of tweak the other layers. I, I could have maybe tweaked it before I did this. Um, so, Wednesday, I want to go adjust that drop shadow a little bit. Uh, it's set at 26. I'm going to knock it down about halfway. 13. And if it's closer to the back, then this is also going to cut down. I'm going to cut this softness down by about 6. It's going to be a little bit darker because it's a little bit closer. Something like that doesn't look bad. And again, like I said, I, should, I, I didn't have to copy it to everything at first because I think I'm going to grab that drop shadow right now, hold my option key, and bring that drop shadow down onto here. See how it looks. That looks a little too much on that, so I'm going to go in and grab my drop shadow. Seems a little too much, so let's take this down to maybe. 13, and then drop that a little bit. 
but it was making the as it darkened up there, it was making it a little difficult to read, and so you want to be careful that you're not killing your legibility when you do this stuff. Uh, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Yeah, not loving it. Uh, a little too much on my bubble and boss there, I think. On class. Instead of pointing to the black, let's put it there and darken it up so that we kind of yeah, that actually works a little better. Good class. As I look at that, one other thing I'm thinking as I see that there's no real, there's not enough movement. That light's dark. There's some, but there's not enough. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to come above everything and add an adjustment layer. Uh, Add myself a nice gradient. I can still work with that. I mean, uh, it's not reflected. Radial. And I'm going to reverse that. And make it a little bit bigger. So it kind of brings my focus in there. And let's change that to maybe a multiply mode. It's not bad, it's not great. I don't mind this stuff. I've got my contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity okay. I do think that, needs to come, that layer needs to come down the chip. Oops, not where you bring the pond the time. Bring that down just a touch, maybe. It's getting a little crowded with that drop shadow, even right there on the Wednesday layer. So. That down just a touch. Gets a little crowded, so maybe somewhere in there. Now let's do something about building a little more contrast. I'm going to grab this. Let's see what happens if I increase that by a little towards the orange side uh, by about 30 degrees. Yeah, no, I don't like that. Z, C, maybe uh, 15 degrees, Three. it's not saying fun to me, and Z, let's take it down 15 degrees and see what happens. Yeah, that, that gives me some better contrast, I'm going to want to repeat that, so I'm going to click that. And I'm going to come grab this hex number and copy it. Hit OK. So that when I go up here to you bring the fun, click up there, and I'm going to just paste that hex number right there. That way I get the same exact going on there. <clears throat> and now let's do some. I'm, I know why I did that. I don't love the way it's reading out, so I'm going to grab that and I'm going to see what happens if I line it there and then come grab this and bring that Wednesday down. feels like the whole thing belongs off to the right a little bit, so I'm going to go grab my text layers, come down here to this text layer. I'm going to hold the shift so that I have all those together. And that can come right to the right. Okay. I've got this big empty space over there. Here's something we could do. Um, we have these these shapes, they're vector shapes. So we got have rectangles and triangles and lines and polygons. We also have this thing called a custom shape tool. 
I'm going to come up here and uh, see if we have anything, any fun in there. Let's close that down. And Command Z. I want to make sure that I have that color. I double clicked on my color picker and then clicked on my text. I want this to be a shape with shape of that color. And I don't need a stroke on it. shift as I do that. If I want to keep it in proportion, I'm going to let this stretch out just a little bit to meet my needs. Then I'm looking for that bottom alignment. I might think of aligning it that way or I might bring it down here. It's going to bring this around that way. see what it looks like at 100%. So I'll double click the hand tool and I'll hit tab to hide everything and I'll hit make sure this is opened up and I'll hit F. Oops, I'm going to get that tab. Click on my move tool and click off that just so I can kind of see what it looks like. So tab tool. Command R to make my rulers disappear. So I have that. Okay, not that it's a beautiful design. Uh, I was just kind of, as I've told other people, I don't try to talk and design at the same time because it doesn't always work. Uh, different sides of the brain of talking. Uh, we could even, if we wanted, grab our little ostrich-looking guy. Make a few more. Each of those, if we look at the layers palette, is now on its own layer, so we can grab them, move them around wherever we want them to be. And we could even grab them and lower their opacity or something. same opacity, just varying degrees of opacity. Okay, double click my hand, my magnifying tool, bring it back in, hit F, F, bring it back to normal. This one right here seems really out of place, so I'm going to command click on it. too transparent to command click on it so and I've now got my palettes all over the place let me go turn my layers back on so I can find it Okay, it's looking like something, maybe darkening up this text right here a little bit. <laughs> text tool. Oops, I've got the wrong layers. 
this one. I'm going to just drag it up here so that they're closer together. Shift click so I can deal with them both at the same time. And they're not loving it. Let's grab this and come grab that same color. Gradients aren't doing a lot for me there. That looks a little bit better. Um, we could also, if we wanted, uh, the whole thing is now a little heavy to the left, so I can kind of grab from there. Up through here. I use the shift key to do that. Make sure I have the move tool. Drag it in. That. Not bad, not bad. And remember, I just, this was partially about those adjustment layers, so we can come in and oh, maybe I want a different hue, not that I do, but you can see that we can go in and adjust those layers as we want. doesn't have the same impact. I'll keep what I had, thank you. But I do think I'm going to lower the saturation on that just a little bit. Okay. So we've added some adjustment layers. We see that we can go in and we can readjust those as we want. We played with some type. I'm not going to claim that this is what you're going to come up with. Uh, I introduced custom shapes, and you can go download more custom shapes. You can create your own custom shapes. Um, they're vector-based tools, so we can do an awful lot with them. Uh, you'll have to download them and then uh, import them. I don't have any to import at the moment, but we can save libraries of custom shapes and download custom lots of custom shapes um, and use those. Just type in uh, free Photoshop custom shapes and then uh, you can find some that you can use. All right, have we addressed line? Yes. Have we addressed um, shape? More or less, although we have a little bit of track space in there. Um, but I don't need it. I think that might actually Head pointing this way, it kind of leads us around. Um, we've changed value, we've changed texture, we've added some color, we've thought about contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity. And now we just need to file, export, and this time we're going to just do a quick export as PNG because we'll do things more. Jump up here, save this as class. I'm going to save it on my desktop. All right. And again, double click my hand tool, tab, tab, tab. And that is my final piece. Okay. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope that helps.